Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to Let's Talk Destiny. Um, I am your host, Jane Cena Green, and once again, I am joined by my number one prince, and we are continuing our conversation um, about the impact of mass incarceration on mothers and families, on the inmates themselves. Today um, is the beginning of September. It's actually the second, I think. Um, but this month, uh, September, is Suicide Prevention Month. And uh, as the president of A Mother's Cry, I am determined to be a voice for the incarcerated persons and for their families in every area. One of the things that has been proven uh, through research and data is that there is a direct uh, correlation between incarceration and the risk of suicide, both <clears throat> among inmates and among their family members. And so I wanna talk about that today um, because I also read as I was you know, doing some studying that the prisons don't really uh, release um, consistent and uh, dependable information when it comes to suicides in their facilities. So the numbers are are not exactly what you know they are realistically. But suicide does happen on a regular basis in these facilities, and it's not hard to figure out why. So today I wanted to have a conversation with my prince about um, his experience with this uh, behind the wall and what would he say are some of the causes or the reasons why people ultimately resort to suicide. So first of all, I wanna welcome you back to the program and then just share um, your thoughts on this subject. Time when you have issues that pertain to suicide, you find that most of the brothers uh, felt closed in, they felt abandoned, lonely, and that's not always just feeling abandoned by family. Because I know certain brothers who had family support. I knew it was one brother. That it was a family day, and again, he had constant support, talked to his family all the time. His family sent him whatever they, whatever he asked for. Came to see him on family day. Not long after the family day, he hung himself. Wow. So it gets to a point of it's this feeling of abandonment and loneliness. It's the same as many people that are not in prison. And you can be in a room full of people and still feel alone. This is a direct result of the squeeze that you feel. It's a squeeze that you feel when you feel like the life is being squeezed out of and nobody is listening or nobody is trying to do anything to relieve that pressure. And you see a high rate of suicide, actually, they saying that suicide, as far as young men go, is on an uptick all over the country. Right, right. But specifically in prison, it becomes exacerbated because the pressure that's an illusion or that you can't really see on the street, you see it, you feel it, and you're in a small cell. It's literally like a bathroom, 23 hours a day, with no way out, with, 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 or at least a feeling of that. Because oftentimes these prisons promote feelings of hopelessness. And again, for those, for those who don't understand how the prison system works, and you may be listening to your latest lying politician or your uncle or aunt 
thinks they know something, but they know nothing about this experience. Let me tell you firsthand, there's nothing about prison that is designed to rehabilitate. Period. Any program that they are telling the public they have that are here for rehabilitation, that is not what they are geared towards. So people are not getting spiritually fed. And again, when you're sitting in cells all day long, you're walking around what feels like a cemetery as far as energy because people are hopeless. So if you get to a point where politicians, uh, attorneys, judges, society as a whole has said, okay, you're a criminal. So now you are worthless. Your life means nothing. Then some people feel like, what is the point in even living? I can't handle this type of stress because every human being wants it. I don't care who it is. You can go to the worst person you can point out in history. That person still wanted to feel love somewhere. That's a human trait that God created everybody with because that's what God is. So the essence of everything we come from is love. And this is why society as a whole is at fault for not doing more to be sure that even those who you feel have messed up or have violated some law still should feel the love of humanity in order to help them become the best they can be, that same potential that God gave everybody. So again, when you create a situation where people don't feel love, love it's like, what is the purpose of living? I don't want to live in a situation where I'm in a cage all day like an animal. If you keep a dog in the cell as much as a lot of prisons are in the cell, as far as the conditions, the heat, the food, the treatment, if you do these same things literally to a dog or to an animal in the zoo, they will lock you up somewhere. Absolutely. So you want to know, again, suicide, most suicides are done because people are at a, a space where they feel hopeless, they don't want to live anymore, and they take the extreme measure of ending it all. And you know, I was thinking about something else as you were talking about the... Um sensory overload that is experienced in that environment, the constant noises, the constant clanging of, of cell doors, the constant yelling and screaming, fighting, um, yelling among the, the guards. Um, the, like your senses are on high alert and they're being attacked 24-7. And on the outside of the prison, we're told when you're feeling overwhelmed and um, over, you know, your senses are being over attacked or whatever, that you go somewhere quiet, maybe go to the beach, sit by the water, go read a book, go someplace quiet, you know, by yourself and, you know, recenter yourself or ground yourself but that's not possible in a prison situation. And so because by nature, we're not created and we're not designed to function with that constant noise, the constant violence and the constant you know, sensory overload. And I personally would think that would have something to do with it as well, because how can you live in an environment where there's constant yelling, screaming, fighting. Um, you know, you, you walk down your tier and you see somebody has stabbed somebody or one of the guards has beat somebody to death or whatever the case may be. That has got to be also a part of when people reach a point where they just say, I can't take this anymore, especially if they have long sentences and they don't see any end. 
um, that sensory overload has got to be an issue as well. Do you agree? Well, that's what goes along with the hopelessness. Yeah. I mean, these are the factors that are created. They create the sense of hopelessness. Wow. You know, I thought about something else too. I remember when you first um, were incarcerated and you told me that they put you on suicide watch because of the length of your sentence. Um, I guess that maybe they felt like that would make you suicidal or whatever. Have you, and I, because I know your personality and I know your faith, um, I didn't really think that was going to be an issue, but you can never tell with people make assumptions, but have you spoken with anyone or you interacted with anyone that um, gave up because of the length of their sentence? Because we're focusing on right now these excessive sentences and these mandatory minimums that are given out um, in this country and especially in this state. And I was thinking about when I was thinking about the suicide correlation to um, incarceration, I was thinking about sometimes when people get these extensive sentences and you just feel like there's absolutely no hope for you to ever get out of there. Do you think that has an impact as well? Absolutely. So again, we back to the word hopelessness. And it, it, again, if you're telling a person, you basically saying to a person, essentially, that your life is over. Right. Now, once reality sets in, as far as that every day is like Groundhog Day in prison. Right. This is why when you hear people say doing time, it's best to not do time. You don't you don't wanna do time. You you wanna take advantage of time. Like no matter what it is, where you're at, you gotta remember that life it's still a precious gift, no matter what. Yes, sir. And nobody outside of yourself should have the power to control how you view, feel, or will live your life. So since this is a God-given gift, this is the time that we try to find the God within and learn to take advantage of it. However, this is a journey, this is a process, that there are not many people who have traveled that road or who know how to show others how to do it. So when you find people that get these types of sentences, like you said with me, uh, I came back to the jail and <laughs> they said, okay, we got to put you on suicide watch. We want to go. And first of all, I know it's a joke. So what Suicide Watch is, for those who don't know, Suicide Watch, when they come and put a person on Suicide Watch, they put you in a room. It, it's like a, it would be a, considered like a single cell. You're still in a cell. You have a toilet, a, a, a sink. It's a regular cell that has a big open window and they have somebody that sits on the outside of it 24-7. People switch and shift. They observe you and write down what you're doing all day long. This is what suicide watch is. Wow. So if, if you're talking about a person on suicide watch, you tell me, based on what I just said to you, and based on what their program for suicide watch is, how is that preventing suicide? It's not. <laughs> right, right. So, so again, you, you absolutely correct, and this is another branch off of that tree of hopelessness as far as the excessive time. I mean, you wake up, and people, you know, you wake up every day in here, like I said, it's brown all day, and one day it hits you. People say, man, I'm never leaving here. I, 
I'm ne- I'm really never getting out. And once that type of hopelessness really sets in, it's like poison. It just starts to rock a person's complete being. And so again, it's been numerous, if not most people who go that route, it's because they've been in a long time, they don't feel like they're ever getting out, or they know they're never getting out if it's up to the so-called powers that be, and they can take their life. Wow. Well, I want to say this, and I know we're probably going to be running out of time shortly, but I want to publicly um, say how extremely proud I am of you because not only are you um, using your time wisely to better yourself, to strengthen yourself, to get to know who you are, who God created you to be, but you're also helping others to do the same thing. I get call, phone calls from people who, <clears throat> who say to me, I was um, with your son and he kept me going. He kept me wanting to move forward. He helped me to become a real man. He showed me what it is to be a man in that um, situation. And some of them have gotten out and said that because of their relationship with you um, and meeting you and following your teachings and um, being mentored by you, that they are making much better choices. So I want to say I'm very proud of you. And as long as I have breath, I will be advocating and working to get you home Um, because the work that you're doing there is wonderful. It's life changing. Is God ordained, but there's so much more work for you to be doing on this side of the wall. And so we're definitely working to get you home, but I am proud of you. And I know that you are a human being and you're not a robot. So there are times down through these past 18 years that you have felt overwhelmed as well. Um, probably, especially during the death of loved ones and stuff like that. But um, I'm very proud of how you're keeping your head up and your feet on the ground. And I want you to continue that work as I continue the work I hear and we are working together uh, to turn this thing around. I'm 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 going to leave with this, right? People have to understand that there's a powerful, the most powerful force in the universe is determination. Mm-hmm. And no matter what a person is going through, when you take the time out to dig deep inside of yourself, you will find again, you will find the strength of God. And there is no greater force than that. So I encourage people to go within self, no matter what it is. Find the strength to love yourself. Love purpose. Find your purpose in life. Don't let the situation define your life because it doesn't. Even if you made certain mistakes or regret certain decisions, no matter what it may be, that does not define your life. And if we allow people to make us feel like we have to fit in their box of definition, this is also what leads to a, a sense of hope. Because I'll point out one thing. People notice around the country there's a serious problem with drug addiction. And I would argue that drug addiction is a slow form of suicide. Because you're still dealing with the mentality of hopelessness and a lack of care and concern for your own life. 
because those who do have that high sense of purpose and love for their life, for their self, for their family, they take the time out to fight that demon or that monkey is on their back. So this is another thing I encourage people. Got family members inside the prison or outside. There's a serious problem with drug addiction. And I'm telling you right now, you look deep into the story of most of these brothers and sisters that are on these drugs, you will find the same mentality of a person that is not far off from tying a sheet around their neck or blowing their brains up. We got to take this drug addiction stuff serious. Yes, sir. Because it is the same frequency of committing suicide. And it's a lack of hopelessness. We got to come together as humanity and love one another. See the oneness in everything. This stuff is not hard as people make it to be. Tear down these false walls that have been put up over the years that really has no bearing on anything that has to do with creation, really. And just put a little love in the air. A lot of stuff take care of itself. It's just nature, it's balanced and harmony. <laughs> wow. Powerful. Powerful. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording because I don't want us to run out of time. But um, hold on just a second. Don't hang up.